This Plinko feature video will cover entity enhancements. Plinko has added several new methods to every business entity that it generates. Detach, which allows entities to be detached from one data context and then reattached to another. Clone, which returns a complete memory copy of the entity. Yes, this does mean that Plinko entities implement iClonable. And Plinko offers serialization of its entities through the two XML and two binary methods. This demonstration will be using the latest tracker sample application, which can be downloaded at codesmith.googlecode.com. The only updates that have been made to this solution are that I've added some new additional unit tests for this video. So let's begin by looking at the entity detach. Now Link to SQL does not support detaching, so if you wanted to detach an entity from a context so that it could be reattached to a different context, the only means you would have to do this would be some sort of clone. If you were to use the same entity and try to attach it to another context, it would throw a system not supported exception. But of course Plinko supports detaching, so let's take a look at how to use that. Here we're going to create a new user, we're going to insert it into this data context, submit changes, and then detach the user. So now that new entity should be in the database. Then we're going to come down here, reattach the entity to a new data context, update the comment, submit changes again, which will succeed as opposed to throwing an exception. Then we're going to detach it, and then we're going to create a new data context and reattach it again to show this doesn't work just once, it can be used as many times as you want. And then we're going to delete that entity to clean out this unit test. So we're going to detach twice and reattach twice. Let's see it in action. So you can see here we've su successfully attached our entity to this context by inserting on submit, so that entity is now in the database. We come down here and we have passed the attach. This was successfully detached, so we were able to attach it to the new context. We're going to update the comment, submit changes again, and now our new entity has been updated in the database. We're going to detach one more time, come in and attach to yet another data context, delete on submit, submit changes, and now that entity is gone. So detach is a very easy to use but very useful feature and just another thing that Plinko supports over standard link to SQL. So now let's take a look at cloning. As I mentioned earlier, all Plinko entities implement iClonable, which means they implement a dot clone method. So in this very simple test, we're going to create a new user, insert him into the database, and then we're going to call dot clone against him. This is going to give us back a complete memory copy of that user, leaving the original user unaffected and still attached to the database and the new clone of course will be a fresh detached copy of that entity. So we're going to make a few updates to it. We're going to set the clone's ID to zero and update his email address and then we're also going to make an update to the user. So when we submit changes we're going to insert the new clone and it'll get inserted as a brand new entity but also the user having been left untouched will have its email address updated. So let's take a look. So now we have successfully inserted our new entity into the database. So let's go take a look at that real quick. I'm going to pull up my management studio. We're going to refresh our query. And notice we now have Marvin at Battlestar.com. So if we continue, we're going to make a clone of Marvin. We're going to update his email address, update the clone's email address, and make the ID zero so we can have a successful insert. We're going to insert him and submit changes. Now if we look back at the SQL Server, we're going to see that Marvin's email address was updated to updated at Battlestar, and the clone was successfully inserted as cloned at Battlestar. So again, all entities in Plinko implement iClonable, and they're going to give you a complete memory copy, leaving the original copy of your entity untouched. So now let's take a look at serialization with Plinko. As I mentioned earlier, all entities expose serialization through the two XML and two binary methods and they also expose deserialization through the static methods of from XML and from binary. So in this example we're going to get an entity from the database, and we're going to serialize it to both formats, and then we're going to deserialize it. So just a quick example to show how simple serialization and deserialization is with Plinko. So we got back our entity, and if we look at that, we got back William Adama with an ID of 1. So if we take a look at our XML, we can see that all the properties on this entity have been properly serialized into the XML document and is ID 1 and it's William Adama. If we close that and take a look at the binary, I have no idea how to read that. <laughs> so let's go ahead and step over the next two steps and we have now deserialized our entity twice. So these should be the same and if we look at user A, 
It's ID 1 of William Adama. All the properties have been set. If we look at user B, it's again ID 1 of William Adama. So that is how quick and easy it is to serialize and deserialize your entities with Plinko. That concludes this video over entity enhancements. We hope you found it to be both helpful and informative. To watch more Plinko feature videos, please visit us at Plinko.com. My name is Tom DuPont. Thank you for using Plinko.